Good evening and thank you for joining us. Ontario has become the final province or territory to ink a child care deal with the federal government. The $13.2 billion program will begin almost right away with a 25% cut in fees for children aged 5 and under and the goal of $10 a day child care on average will be achieved by September of 2025. Raheem Ladani has the details. As Ontario families struggle to keep up with some of the highest child care costs in the country, a deal between the provincial and federal government looks to put money back into parents' pockets. Child care is not a luxury. It is a necessity. Beginning April 1st, licensed child care centres will reduce fees by up to 25% to a minimum of $12 per day. By the end of December, fees will be reduced by 25% more, which the government says will save the average family $6,000 per child. Then in September 2024, child care fees will be reduced even further. And finally, in September 2025, will ultimately reach an average of $10 per day. It's a deal that provides flexibility in how we allocate federal funding. Flexibility that was critical to making this program work in Ontario. Ontario was the last province to sign on to the national program in a failed negotiation to get more than the earmarked $10.2 billion over five years. Although the Premier did get a funding commitment in writing for year six, which the federal government has already promised across the country. All the other provinces also know they get funding on the sixth year, on the seventh year, on the tenth year, on the twentieth year. 86,000 new child care spaces have also been pledged by 2025, which the Ford government says will be prioritized across the province. There's parts of Toronto and Brampton and Vaughan in so many communities in the GTHA, let alone in remote parts of Ontario, where it is very difficult to find access to a child care centre. More space creates a need for more workers. The deal also raises the minimum wage of staff to $18 per hour and supervisors to $20, with both increasing until reaching $25 per hour. But those in the industry say it's not enough to combat the staffing shortage. To say, well, if I go into it in five years' time, the minimum wage in the sector will be $25, I just don't, I don't think it's going to work. Leaving more work to be done. That was CT CTV's Raheem Ladani, and we'll have local reaction to the new child care deal on tomorrow's news hour. Kiwitanung MPP Sol Mamakwa called on the Ford government today to address health care access in the north. This following the sudden closure of the Red Lake Hospital's emergency department this weekend. The Margaret Koshner Memorial Hospital was forced on Friday to announce that the emergency service would not be available for 24 hours due to a shortage of physicians. That left patients in that area facing a two-hour drive and needing an air ambulance to access the nearest ER in Dryden. Mamakwa says Red Lake is just one of the many hospitals in the north that's struggling to retain doctors. Many physicians find it um, daunting to work in small hospitals where obtaining basic diagnostic services such as CT scans have to be done off-site. They also must practice with a very broad um, scope of expertise with minimal specialist support. This government must address the inequitable access to basic emergency medical care. The Provincial Emergency Operations Centre and the Ministry of Health coordinated patients to be redirected to Dryden and air support was available for EMS transfers as required. Fortunately, no air transfers were required, but two ambulances did drive to Dryden with patients. Mamakwa also asked the minister to address scheduling challenges for locum doctors, who must sometimes travel long distances. Elliot pointed the finger at the previous Liberal government for the physician shortage, blaming them and the NDP for eliminating and then capping medical school seats. Thunder Bay Police have announced the arrest of a 16-year-old boy following a standoff that forced officers to block off a south side street for more than five hours yesterday. Tactical unit officers were dispatched to a home on the 300 block of Cameron Street just after 1.45 p.m. after reports of a male with a handgun. Police contained the area and the standoff ensued. Just after 7 o'clock, ETU officers entered the home and arrested the youth from Ajax, Ontario. 
He now faces a variety of charges, including possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose, as well as possession of cocaine and fentanyl for the purpose of trafficking. The teen was also charged with violating a judicial release order, which forbade him from coming to Thunder Bay except to attend court. He appeared in bail court today, but remains in custody. The judge in the Thunder Bay trial of two men accused of kidnapping and murdering 40-year-old Lee Kyoto will deliver his verdict next month. 30-year-old Musab Sabun of Kitchener and 50-year-old David Huey of Thunder Bay were arrested in March of 2019, a few days after Kyoto's body was found on Mission Island with a single gunshot wound to the head. Both accused are pleading not guilty to kidnapping and first-degree murder. The eight-day trial took place in early March and featured shocking testimony and surveillance video. Today, Justice Daniel Newton announced he will deliver his verdict on April 22nd. Zaboon remains in custody while Huey was previously released on bail. It's now been one week since the province lifted the mask mandate in most indoor spaces, but it seems many local residents aren't ready to give them up just yet. Lee Noonan spoke with shoppers today to find out how many of them have ditched the face coverings. It's now been a full week since mask wearing became optional in most indoor spaces, but local businesses are saying that a lot of their clientele is still opting in. Sarah Green, manager at Mayor Hardware on Algoma, estimates that about 70% of their customers have continued wearing their masks in the store. Uh, we put a mask-friendly sign on our door, and some customers just keep a mask in their pocket, and then when they walk in, um, they see the sign, they put it on, or, or choose not to. It's up to them. So, but I haven't had any customers um, getting upset with other customers, so if somebody doesn't want to come into the store because they're unhappy with um, some customers being unmasked, then you know, we'll do a curbside order for them. So we're, we're doing our best to accommodate everybody. So. One customer forgot his mask in his truck when he came in for a part and said that he felt comfortable without it, although he may have felt differently somewhere else. That, uh, people have choices and uh, that's fine. It's uh, up to them, you know, and uh, just let's work together with this, you know, let's get through it. It's all we can work together and, and enjoy, you know, enjoy life. That live and let live sentiment was echoed by some people we spoke to at Inner City Shopping Centre, where the proportion of mask wearers has apparently declined from about 60% to 40% over the past week. I feel okay not wearing a mask, but if you choose otherwise, that's entirely up to you. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, didn't really like wearing them from the start, but, you know, some places still got to wear Like the dentist office up there had to put on, so it's not a big deal. As long as I'm protecting myself... Um, I guess that's how it really matters, right? You know, everybody has their own opinions. Um, we all live in Thunder Bay. We all shop. We all do things. Um, you know, just be neutral and get along. And if they aren't wearing one, then that's okay. Not everyone agreed, however, with some saying they still feel masks are needed to avoid outbreaks and protect the vulnerable. I have this on. I still feel like I should be. I've been going into places wearing it. Like I went to just go print off some resumes. And I still feel like I still feel like I should be concerned about other people's safety. It's still the pandemic around and taking off a mask is like a disadvantage and could probably get COVID. Lee Noonan, TBT News. COVID-19 numbers at the Regional Health Sciences Centre are down today. There are now 22 patients in hospital, down from 27 on Friday and a high of 28 over the weekend. Five of those patients are in the ICU. The hospital's occupancy rate sits at 96.5%, while the occupancy rate in the intensive care is at nearly 82%. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit is reporting 66 new COVID-19 cases over the weekend, though all case counts at this time are widely believed to be an underrepresentation. There are now 119 known active cases across the district. The Northwestern Health Unit is reporting 218 active cases across its catchment area. The NWHU's test positivity rate has risen to 17%. Synergy North customers will see their hydro rates go up this spring. A typical residential customer in Thunder Bay can expect a 3% increase in the fixed monthly charge, rising to $26.40. On top of that, time of use pricing will also go up by just over a dollar a month on average. That's a further 0.86% increase. The new rates take effect on May 1st. 
Thunder Bay Archives officials will bring information to City Council tonight regarding a proposed $3.5 million expansion for the facility on Vicker Street. The project would modernize the 32-year-old building and increase its capacity to last another four decades. Kurt Black has the details. Since its completion in 1990, the City Archives office on Vicker Street has been the home to countless historical and cultural documents that outline civic decisions over the past 150 years. Information that is key to the city's future, according to Archives Records and Privacy Manager Matt Sibalski. Well, it's important for a number of reasons. One is that, you know, you, you can't go to where you're going to unless you know where you've, you've come, and this tells you where we've, where we've come from. Also housed among the rows on rows of files are important legal documents that have proved pivotal throughout the years, most notably when the James Street Swing Bridge caught fire in 2013. We were able to help our legal services by finding documents that uh, helped the city in this case, including that 1906 agreement with the Grand Trunk Pacific, which said that the, build, build, the bridge was to be maintained in perpetuity. But with the facility taking in around 400 boxes of documents a year, they are set to run out of space in 2023. And that's why city staff are proposing a 4,200 square foot addition that will bring the archives building into the 21st century, featuring temperature and humidity controls, and most importantly, modern mobile shelving that will provide enough storage for the next 40 years. And if everything goes to plan, Sobolski envisions the project being completed within the next two years. So the first year um, would be all planning and engineering uh, to plan the building. Um, and, then the, and then in 2024, we would start construction and hopefully can com complete it in 2024. Council will be presented with all the necessary information on Monday night and a formal proposal will be included in the 2023 and 2024 city budgets. Kurt Black, TBT News. Delays to the 2022 local shipping season continue with difficult weather conditions causing several vessels to wait it out near Sault Ste. Marie. The first ship was supposed to arrive here on Saturday. Strong winds on the Big Lake have caused safety concerns like freezing spray and waves three meters high. The delay has given icebreakers like the Samuel Risley more time to clear the path into the local harbour and ensure safe passage during the opening days of the shipping season. Thunder Bay Harbour Master Guy Jarvis says waiting a few extra days is simply a matter of safety and won't have any long-term impact on the shipping season really no consequence basically it is a 48 hour delay uh, basically we were thinking of uh, the traffic list as showing uh, one vessel a day for the upcoming week so basically there is hardly no delay uh, over the last three days we uh, worked on the uh, outside harbors and we broke out everything from here to uh, welcome island and then to welcome island to thunder cape so from the break wall out it's all free Depending on the weather, the first ships could begin making their way from the Sioux tonight or tomorrow morning, with the trip taking about a day. Thunder Bay's first major in-person job fair since the pandemic began will take place later this week. The Opportunities Northwest Job Fair is meant to connect job seekers and businesses. A wide variety of industries will be represented, including technology, mining and tourism. The event is being put on by Dougal Media. More than 50 exhibitors are signed up. It runs from 10 to 7 this Thursday at the Valhalla Inn. A main stage will be set up to allow businesses a chance to explain their operations and what they can offer as an employer. Event consultant Nancy Milani believes the in-person format is key for job seekers and their potential future employers. There has been a lot of career fairs that have been done in the last few years by Zoom and digitally, and they haven't been successful. I think as an employer, you want to see those people face to face. You want to have the opportunity to really see them and meet with them. And we are providing that opportunity in a safe environment. There's no fee to attend the job fair on Thursday. Anyone interested will just have to sign in at the door. The quick action of a local man may have saved the life of an older dog that fell into the Niebing River. Sam Boutel was walking his own dogs along the Vickers Street Bridge on Friday with a friend and his girlfriend 
when they heard whimpering from below. The dog lover instantly sprung into action with little on his mind except to help the pooch in trouble. Just, I have to help this dog somehow. I got to get down there and get him out of the water. Utel explains how the incident took place. He says it was shortly after 5 o'clock on Friday when 12-year-old Moose, a yellow Labrador retriever, fell through the ice and was in need of rescue. This picture shows the careful way that Butel scooped up Moose. In his words, he was more worried about the dog than for his own safety, knowing that he would be able to get out of the water. It was pretty heartbreaking just listening to him whine, and it's like, what, else, what are we going to do if we wait for animal services? No, it's just go get that dog, figure out, <laughs> figure everything out after. Well, what a story, and Moose has now made a full recovery after the scary dip in the river. Utel used the phone number on Moose's collar to contact the dog's owner, Katie Williams, who was out searching in the area when she got the call. Utel says he hopes anyone would do the same if they saw an animal in distress. Local residents are going to need their shovels once again, as old man winter continues to keep a tight grip on northwestern Ontario. Another dump of fresh snow is expected this week, but the forecasts vary on just how much will fall. The city just got more than 40 centimeters of the wet snow last week. Since then, temperatures have dropped but they'll rise again tomorrow, bringing along another low-pressure system. Environment Canada meteorologist Jean-Philippe Beijing says they're expecting 10 to 20 centimetres of the fresh snow and ice pellets from late Tuesday night into Wednesday evening. But he says shoveling should be easier this time around. We're looking for a 10 to 1 ratio, so one millimetre will, uh, uh, will uh, become close to one centimetre. Uh, centimeter. So uh, it's not... Uh, the heaviest snow, but it's not the fluffiest snow either. Uh, so it's kind of in the middle, uh, but we don't expect wet snow with this one. Meanwhile, AccuWeather has a much higher prediction for the snowfall. It's projecting 30 to 45 centimeters starting Tuesday afternoon and lasting through Thursday evening. The special weather statement issued late this afternoon by Environment Canada acknowledges that there's a lot of uncertainty regarding the amount of snow. Well, and Fiona, that means people are going to be upset with you uh, because you control.